Joining us now, the head basketball coach from the University of Texas, El Paso, Tim Floyd. Tim, good to see you, bud. Good to see you, Ron. Last year was supposed to be this, <clears throat> what coaches like to call a rebuilding year. Yeah. But your team, for a lot of the times, were competitive. Now, they lost a couple of close games. But was that a good foundation for what's to come this season? You know, I think so. I do. I, we, we went from being the oldest team in the country our first year to the youngest team, along with St. John's in the country, last year. I think this year we're going to be the 12th youngest team in the country. If that sounds like we're already making excuses for this year, it may be right. I don't know. <laughs> That's reality, though. That's <laughs> but, reality. But, uh, yeah, yeah we, had, we had some nice wins, some quality wins, some real tough losses along the way. Uh, uh, but the, the key was trying to lay a foundation, hopefully trying to, to develop a couple of stars uh, from a 10-man recruiting class and some nice role players and then add some pieces in the years to come to, uh, to solidify the program. Before we move on to this year's team, but just one more thing about last year. You, you beat Memphis in Memphis, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like this team was playing hard, and a lot of us thought that's the first step for you guys, but they just weren't able to sustain it. Yeah, right. We uh, were in uh, close games every single night. Uh, I think we won a stretch in February. We lost four consecutive games by one point. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't have enough offensive firepower to uh, get away from teams. Right. So we were just hoping to hang around, hang around, and then – get over the top at the end and uh, that was our goal in the offseason was to, to add a little firepower and hopefully we did that. John Bohannon obviously returns top scorer, top rebounder. What does he mm -hmm. mean to this team? Well he's our oldest player as a, as a junior in terms of experience. He has two years experience in our program. Jock Street, our senior, has one year experience. <clears throat> um, so you're expecting a, a guy that uh, you can rely on every single night to put up solid numbers, which he did but uh, eliminate mistakes, which uh, I think you should be at the point where that starts happening for him. No turnovers. Uh, you know, l l let's go out and be consistent off the court in addition on the court um, and, and help us with this new group of young guys. And the, one of the young guys you have to watch out for, Julian Washburn, who made the Conference USA All-Freshman team last year. How does he elevate his game? Now, his brother's also joining the team, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. So, But now, Julian, he's got to elevate his game because what we saw last year, I think we saw – a lot of good things, but we also saw a lot of room for improvement. Well, Julian is one of the premier <clears throat> athletes in Conference USA, and I think will be one of the premier players mm -hmm. in this league. He had not played basketball in two years, came in, and I think was our second leading scorer as a freshman. Uh, he's uh, got an upside, I think, not unlike DeMar DeRosian, who I had at the University of Southern California. Similar athlete, maybe a better defender, maybe a better 17, 18-foot shooter than DeMar. Uh, it's just becoming more familiar with playing, more instincts, uh, and those things go with experience, but I, th I expect him to have a great year. And, and what other young guys should we keep an eye on? Well, I think uh, Mackenzie Moore is a newcomer mm -hmm. uh, who we added. He'll be uh, eligible December the 6th. He's a 6'7 guard, point guard, oh. who uh, will remind our fans a lot of Julian Stone, who mm -hmm. kind of anchored some very good teams for Tony Barbie. Uh, uh, I think McKenzie's got a chance to be a special player in this conference. Uh, we've added a, a young man from Jackson, Mississippi, by the name of Taman Howard, who was runner-up Mr. Basketball in the state of Mississippi, averaged 27 points a game. Uh, his challenge is going to be to try to figure out how to transfer points that he could score in high school to the college level. Right. If he can do that and be a double-figure scorer for us, I think he makes us a pretty good team. Uh, we uh, have added Julian's little brother, Chris Washburn, mm -hmm who is uh, 6'8", 240 pounds, uh, was uh, a highly sought-after player and uh, has a unique skill in today's college basketball in that he can actually score with somebody on his back <laughs> if you throw him the ball down on the post. And he's left-handed and, and clever and, uh, uh, and did a great job in the offseason losing 30 pounds and uh, gives us some hope there. We had uh, one other signee who didn't qualify late. It was 7'1", who I think... Uh, uh, gave us a chance to become a pretty darn good team. He'll redshirt this year and Matt Wilms and will be with us a year from now. So you take all these young players that you've got coming in, 12th youngest team in the country, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and you're playing probably the most difficult schedule in your school's history. Yeah, and maybe the most difficult schedule in the country, uh, certainly non-conference schedule yeah. in the country. Um, it's, it's loaded. We're, we're a year early on this schedule. Yeah. We should be doing it a year from now. Uh, but uh, where we're trying to go in terms of big picture, I think it's going to be attractive to uh, great recruits that we're trying to sign. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I think they all want to play against the best players they can play against. I think it's going to be really attractive to a really deserving fan base that we have in El Paso, a uh, very sophisticated fan base that gets basketball, appreciates seeing great teams in there, and uh, we've certainly beefed it up. Uh, and then I think if we can survive it and, and not just get beaten down, not learn how to lose, uh, that by the end of the season, uh, those experiences that we've garnered uh, through the pre-conference schedule will, will help us as we approach a conference tournament. And just for a point of record here, they're playing at least 17 teams that were in the top 50 RPI last season. Yeah. So yeah. It'll, it'll be either a time for growth for these guys or to find out what they're really made out of. It, it sounded just terrific when we did it last April. It just doesn't sound <laughs> what really ideas good sound now. terrific. Yeah, it doesn't sound good now. It really doesn't. Well, Coach, yeah. we wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Good seeing you Thank again. Thank you, Ron. All right, Tim okay. Floyd. Take care.